so app development with closure script and of course we will be using closure script here we will be using reagent which is a library framework i don't know what the distinction there is for for um it's a wrapper around uh react and we will be using reframe uh which is a very very ergonomic i would say way to handle state in your application if you have uh, seen elm used elm the model update view that's where this is gets its inspiration and it's very similar to redux of course which also gets its inspirations from from elm here and we will be using shadow cljs uh, which is uh, i love shadow cljs it's a what is a project um, tool closure script compiler hot reloader it does uh, a lot of things for you when you build uh, closure script applications but the one thing that you know it really does so nicely is that it hot reloads uh, your 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 code as you build it it will it will uh, do these redefinitions and and then call uh, the app entry every time so you can you can build your app in a very interactive way and i will show you this with an app template that i have done uh, you find that also on my github um, and um, uh, i can show you so this is this template and it promises you to get uh, up and running uh, with React Native using Shadow CVS in three minutes. And I have clocked it. Uh, for me, at least, it's true. Maybe uh, this is a bit of. Uh, I, try, yeah. I tried it out and it uh, was uh, yeah. five minutes, I think, for me. It was five. Okay, maybe I. Yeah, should, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I, but it was that. really fast. It was really, <laughs> it was it, really it fast. Takes, yeah. But it's a few simple steps. Like, since you have edit, you can maybe watch for that as lead. It's very easy uh, to set up using these instructions. You are up and running uh, uh, quickly. And if you're using something else than Calva, you have instructions for that here as well. I want to not talk so much about this now and just show you instead. So there's a button here, a label, uh, two images, and a text. And they are defined in uh, in here we have uh, this application is 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 running uh, and we have this uh, editor plugged in to this application so one way to is to yeah so we can call this function uh, inside uh, here and uh, get, get an effect. I can also inspect stuff uh, in the application here. So this is a reframe subscription. I will get a bit more in, into what it is, but this is a reframe subscription on this. Uh, it's called get counter and I can inspect it uh, here. I control enter again, I will hit zero. And that's actually this counter here that's zero. So if I tap this button a few times uh, and then evaluate here again, you can see that I'm actually plugged into the, to, to this application. I can inspect the application and I can also, I can also um, modify the application as it is running. And maybe we will show, see more about that. So reagent is the thing that we use to wrap uh, uh, React, it gives us a declarative literal syntax for for defining our views. In this case, it's a view here, which in turn has a view with a button in it. This button has an on press, this dispatches this uh, event. And uh, it has this text. And then uh, we have this label here there and then we have another view with the images and then here we have uh, this text here so let's show you that i can uh, the hot reloading i was talking about right so if we if we uh, switch places of uh, 
uh, say this button and this text, right? You should, according to your good UX, you shouldn't have the button above the text, right? Let's see. So if we switch places there, and now I save the file. So that will happen in the application. And please note here that the seven is still there. So it will, it will redefine uh, the view, uh, the DOM. I don't know if it's called it call the DOM, but anyway. And, but it will keep, it will keep the state of the application. And now you need to imagine that this is much more complicated um, state. It could be a big uh, single page application. You have navigated several tabs and pages and stuff to come here and entered stuff in forms and you know and everything to get your state which which uh, uh where you can reproduce your bug and then you try something to fix the bug and if it, it doesn't work you don't want or even if it works you don't want to uh try out, out and then get back to all that to that particular state and then try this if, if, if it worked or not you want to try it uh uh with your fix without doing that. So that's what you can do here. You can modify the application and uh, you will have always have uh, this, the, the state. So this is uh, what I'm talking about, actually, when I say that you are modifying the running application from your editor. Uh, let's see if we, we can do something more. Maybe we want to Have a yellow background here, maybe not. <laughs> um, uh, so like that, maybe, maybe we want don't want uh, have the tapped there, and maybe seventy two points. So, yeah, you can uh, you can go on, of course. Maybe you wanna get uh... yeah. I'm not a designer, so I will not uh, keep <laughs> keep doing this. Um, but anyway, you see the point. Here. You can change the uh, the views and application uh, without uh, losing the state. And this, of course, goes uh, with uh, for um, uh, doing changes to the logic of the application uh, as well. And as we are going to look at the logical application, I want to just show you how this the application is structured. So it's, as I said, a reframe is a big thing here. So as maybe most things, things in Clojure, it starts with data. So here we define our app uh, 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 database, and it's just a map with a, this counter and a Boolean uh, here. Um, and then when this application is initialized uh, through uh, an event, I will show you. I'm making sure it's now. This is the initialized uh, DB. So it imports this app DB that we're looking at. And then this event handler just returns it. So that's how this uh, application is in initialized so if i if i say start this app at counter 10 and then uh, we define this 10 you see this nothing happens here we have just redefined this and this uh, uh, is an immutable value so so well, no matter what you do you will never change this one uh, but when you initialize the database, it will be captured here in the reframe DB database as an app DB, which is an atom. So if we look at that one, uh, now I have dereferenced it, and you see uh, that it has this state actually, right? So if I remove this deref thing here and we look at it, you can see that it is a reactive atom. That's a reference type. Uh, um, what the reagents give you uh, an atom that you can react to uh, in your in your reactive applications. So again, 
that that's what's in there. But how now do I get this application to to uh, uh, this state to be here? Uh, I dispatch this uh, this event, uh, and I can do it. I have it here because that's the first thing this app does when it starts. So it dispatches this initialized DB event here. And if I do that, then I, then we we are actually uh, 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 changing this atom that's holding that's holding this uh, uh, this state in, in in this app DB here. So very often, in, in when you work with a reframe application, you will actually use this one to uh, to uh, inspect uh, the state of the application. Often, it's very much bigger map than this, and and uh, you. Uh, uh, you pick up stuff from the database and look at it, and and through functions added and and experiment with it. Next thing in this application are the subscriptions. So they are uh, defined with a keyword, and then they are defined as a function that takes the DB as the first uh, argument, and then possibly other arguments, and then. Uh, you can return something that you calculate from this uh, from this uh, DB. So in this case, the get counter it returns the result of this call, which looks up counter in the DB. And as you see, it looks up ten in the DB here. So um, let's say we wanna. This is the thread last macro we have here, right? So if we do that on this DB here, you will have 10. Uh, actually, I'm get confused with this starting at 10, so I will I will go back to it being zero. So are we about this? It's uh, you get zero. So that's actually what happens in this uh, in the in this subscription. So when the View here is uh, uh, the reference is this subscription. It gets assigned to this variable counter, and counter will be shown in the application. So that's how uh, how it's wired there. And then you have uh, the events, uh, of course, and they are also uh, uh, first a keyword, and then a function taking the database as the first argument, and then some other arguments that you might or might not care about. And then you can transform this database and return a new uh, a new database. Things in Clojure are immutable, as uh, we said. So if I have something called foo defined as a map a to a to two, say like that. Now I have lots of functions that I can use uh, on foo to uh, to um, uh, transform that structure. So I could, for instance, assus b into it with the value of one. Assus takes the map as its first argument, and now if I evaluate this, we will get a, out a map with eight two. ink on it and ink is on yeah, it's uh, it just inks with one that's what happens when we tap here so um now if we want to modify the application not the visible part of it like how it behaves say when it's running uh, I would let's say we we make it the decrement encounter instead, and I just, I just redefine this um, uh, uh, event handler, and now when I tap here, I have modified the application. So, and of course I can. Uh,
we can make it ink four times or whatever. So let's uh, what's happened here. Let's uh, put it back as just like that. Good. Uh, now we have seen that we, we can modify uh, uh, the application, both how it looks and how it behaves without any restarting, uh, without losing state. Uh, so very, very powerful. Uh, should we do something uh, fun? Uh, what uh, do programmers do when they want to do something fun? Um, or maybe something um, um, yeah I can actually show you this just before I go to that one you see here I haven't saved these files uh, yet the application is something else than is uh, was in the files before well, in the save files right so that is often what happens at least when I work I, I quite seldom actually save stuff. I just redefine them using, using uh, the repo. And sometimes I need to do that also for visible things. So let's say, let's say we actually want it to be yellow in the background here. But now if I redefine this function, the background here stays white. And that is because this function hasn't been called. The thing that you know redefines uh, uh, the view here. It needs to be called. So that is what Shadow does when we when we save the file. It will reevaluate all the forms in the save files and all dependent stuff uh, that it needs to, and then it will look for this metadata on the function on functions, and it will call them. So it will actually actually call this start function here. And you see that what happens here in the init, it ends with calling start. So we can actually please go say and use control enter to go, and then we can uh, uh, we can uh, modify uh, the running application, the, the the look of the running application. So now now again I have uh, an unsaved file here uh, with where the saved file states a white background, but uh, but the unsaved state says a yellow background and the unsaved state wins because that's what we have defined in the repo. Is this making sense to you? Yep. Great. Um, uh, so I, I very often uh, uh, work like that and I very often I don't know if you saw it, but Calva supports custom REPL commands. So, so something that you, you want to call often say, it's the simplest thing with a custom REPL command. It's just a, it's just a form that you want to evaluate at will. So you have a run uh, rep, custom REPL command, command there. And if you have them defined, was it control all space? Yes, it was then it will uh, give you a menu with those and you can uh, uh, you can call it. So this fun, this one here says remount the, uh, the CLJS app. That is actually defined as just paren start close to paren. And uh, I have bound it uh, if, I, if I recall correctly to control command hour. So let's see if that control command R. No, I haven't. Okay. Uh, let's call it this way instead then. Uh, no, I haven't redefined this. No. Ah. Control command R. So you can work like that all, uh, for a long time uh, having unsaved files that uh, that uh, and you have like gotten the application into the completely new state, just redefining stuff through the repo. A, a, a question uh, there. Yeah. 
So, so what what you did when you when you talked about custom commands is and and you bound this to a shortcut. So what you did was sending that that start form to your REPL, right? Exactly, or, and it value yeah, okay. it. So we can yeah. we can look we can look at the so here the uh, the custom command is uh, defined. So it is actually just this that is sent sent to the REPL. Yeah, so that was nice. the same as as uh, finding this place here and or typing it somewhere and, and so since I do this so much I often I often have uh, a custom command like that that I can I can uh, re-render uh, the application without saving anything. Yeah, and it's, did, it's very did, did powerful you do... because you could be in the mid in the middle of something. You can have something here. I don't know if we have defined bar. I don't think so. But now if I save this let's say i have that and uh we have uh sorry my, my imagination is so bad but i can take red now to bear it up a bit so now if i use shadows reload and i save this it will reevaluate everything in this file and then call start but since we have this thing here that's that that uh, this namespace is like broken. You can see here that shadow croaks. Then it will not uh, redefine uh, 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 your application correctly and not uh, not work. So if I remove this, we heal this file again and save. Of course, then it will turn red. But then in this case. I have it like that, and uh, I have it again broken here. And I, this can could be broken because I'm just in the middle of fleshing it out, right? Uh, then I can just redefine this and uh, uh, control command or and still look at my changes. Um, so yeah, so that's what's going on. Very, really nice. Uh, so, uh, if we have some, yeah, we have time, right? That's good. Uh, we can just play a bit uh, with, let's say there comes a product owner in here and wants, uh, wants to test us to see, can you do fist bus? Let's say, uh, let's be cliche here. So we, we, we do fist bus. So what do you do as a closure programmer, uh, when you get fist bus, uh, so what I, I, I I could like start with I could make myself one of those comment blocks right and then I think like fist bus so everything divisible by three should return fist right um, and okay so well, what functions do I have in in the toolbox I have mod uh, so that function will take a numerator and uh and the divisor and it will uh return the modulo of that so that's one that's correct right so if we have two three. great and we can actually use this subscription here then if we like so we have this subscription it returns 24 right now so if i if I take this subscription and we put it here, and now I call this function. 24 is divisible by three, right? So it should return fist then. And now if I tap here and run this. So uh, this is one way of doing it, and I find myself often doing, uh, doing it. Okay, so we need to compare the result of mod with zero. How could you do that? You can, of course, use the equals uh, uh, function. Everything is function, same in enclosure. The first thing in, in within the parents are calling function positions. So that is the function. And we can give equals uh, an arbitrary number of things to compare. And it will tell you if every one of them are equal. And 
this is you can see a bit of the strength of the of the prefix notation here that you can those equals in some other infix languages they can only take just two arguments but here you can you can uh, throw many at it. so equals you can do of course you can have that subscription and see if it equals zero uh no uh sorry let's do it like this and then Uh, actually, here I should probably use thread first, which will place the result of this here. So that should be one still, and then the result will be placed here for this one. Just one arrow here will place the result here. Here I'm using commas, which are just white space in in, in closure, but I can use them to show you where. So it will say it's false, of course, because it's not divisible by, and then we call 26, still false, 27, true. Oh, good. So that's one uh, way of doing it. We can also use the zero predicate function. Predicate functions, closure often ends there with a question mark. Zero, that's good. And there are lots of these, of course. Is it even? Uh, why do I get true here? Yeah, of course, zero is true, A is even. Yeah, sorry, I got confused myself. Um, so uh, we have like a, the start of, uh, of um, um this bus here i will now start with the result of this subscription and then uh let's start fetching out this uh this bus function here so since it is just like a function i need uh, then i need to call the function here and then i i will um uh define the function in here so now i will define a lambda and this one will take a number and let's say it just returns uh, uh the number so this now i need a thread last again here and so this if i call this it will should return 27 right because we're just returning uh, uh the argument here so uh, we have in closure uh, something called, uh, um, I think it is a macro called cond. Uh, and cond takes expression and uh, test expressions and then result expressions, if you like. So we saw that when we chased that bug before, that, uh, that that's how it works. So if we give this a, uh, 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 a test expression here, uh, like uh, is is mod of n is that zero? Uh, if it is, uh, we uh, mod uh, sorry mod n three, right? Is that zero? Uh, then uh, we want to return this. Uh, otherwise, uh, we just return uh, n. And con takes expression, test expression, and it takes a test expression and then uh, the result expression. Else is just a keyword, but it's truthy because everything except Neil and Paul's is truthy. So it's a convention that you use else in, in the cont. So this one should return this to us, right? Great. What about the bus then? Uh, oh, sorry. That 
fingers. So, but that is of course more than five. And if it is, we return bus like that. This returns fist still, right? But if you click at this three times, now it should, should return. Oh, of course, it's a uh, uh, byte. It's uh, divisible. What is the, what, what are the rules? Should we test for three first or five first? I have no idea about the fiscal rules. Uh, but we could, of course, say that is like this if you want, and then if we then it answers uh, uh, bus until it reaches thirty three again. It says this, and then it should say for zero of mod fifteen and then fifty. It should say to face bus, right? And okay, now I need to tap a while here. What's the next one? It's 45, maybe. Let's try this one now. It says 43, that's right. 44 is right. Face bus. And 48, right? This. I say this is FISBUS. It's done. And now I defined it just here in the comment block, but I define it as this lambda here. And I can, it sounds a bit strange, but I can actually like name the lambda. And often, often do, I would say. It's, it, it does exactly the same thing. But if uh, uh, something uh, crashes inside, a lambda, then then you will get some help from the error message and stuff like that uh, to find this one because you have named it. But it's also very good because now you can take this and you can paste it here and then just use this macro instead, defn, to define this function in the namespace. So now it's not lambda anymore, once we defined one. So you could then say that FB is the return of this bus uh, on the counter. And the counter is the result of this subscription. And this is then this bus calling this bus on, on, on that counter. And then if we then do FB here instead, and redefine this control command R. Uh, yeah, I've redefined uh, uh, this uh, application. So now if I click here, it should be a FISBUS counter instead. Make sense? Yeah, very nice. Um, so, what, what do you say if we turn this into a question and answer session? Uh, we can just talk to each other and uh, you can give me stuff I can try, try at the Red Bull if you like and stuff or whatever. That, uh, Sounds perfect. Good you. So we were here and yeah, we can go back to talk about closure or uh, um, whatever you like. I would like to to recommend uh, anyone to see this first video that I uh, link to here, because uh, it's he's using uh, JavaScript and working the closure way in in JavaScript. So then you can watch that to see how to work in, in the closure way without being distracted by syntax you don't. Uh, a very very powerful video, I would say. It's. Uh, um, yeah, uh, no. I would say that. Watch that one. Nice. Uh, I th suggest that we we stop the recording, and we take the question and answer offside. Is that okay? If you like, yeah, that works yeah. for me. Okay. Mm -hmm.